Yes, thank you very much, Xin Wei. Uh, we see how uh, changes in China, uh, the wealth of the people and development has put a need for more complex uh, system to resolve disputes, to keep records so we can appeal and everything else. As you know, the lawyers in the crowd generate work for the lawyers. Uh, and of course, it's good to know that the rural communities still use this uh, traditional means to resolve their dispute. And we were very grateful for the presentation by Kofta May about the Poke uh, community and their uh, generational system and how for such a long time uh, trying to resolve disputes between these two groups have not been successful. So it makes good sense to look at the traditional, the culture of the people and try to understand it and see how we can use that to help them to, to resolve the, the disputes between them. Uh, now we is the uh, Q&A period when you get a chance to ask questions. So uh, raise your hand and I'll give you the mic. Thank you. I think mine is not a question, it is a, a comment to the presentation. Uh, I've been doing research in Kenya, especially in my PhD research in which I worked about a relationship and interrelation between ethnic identity, the state, and the dynamics of the ethnic relations. And one of the communities which I studied in this research, they are also involved in Keto Hustling. I think you are aware of the place we have uh, the Maasai. I studied the Maasai in Narok County, in Transmara. I studied the Kipsigis in Naro County, they are in Transmara, the Kuria in Migori County, and in Tanzania. They are all involved into cat restoring. And one of the causes for conflict is cat restoring. Uh, in your presentation, I have seen that you are based much on uh, the dynamics of uh, generation sets. But I think there are a lot which you can also include. For example, when I was studying about uh, interviewing about Kipsig's elders as relation to Kato Rastrin, which is also in Kenya, they mentioned about the role of the mother, the role of the mother in the occurrence or undertaking of Kato Rastrin. They, call, they have a word they use to call ragatio, meaning uh, a belt, a traditional belt which a mother ties around the bell when she's pregnant. And this is used to decide when a son goes to cat riding, he would first visit the mother. Ask her, ah, are you going to support me in the riding? If she says, no, I am not ready, I will untie my regatio, then the son will not go into riding. It is a tradition. I don't know whether you have come across this. Then one thing which I, I also come across is uh, the role of the prophets, which you mentioned. You mentioned about the role of the prophets, the, the four seers. Among the courier, which are also involved in Tuket Rastring, they said the, uh, the prophets have a role in instigating conflict instigating conflict because they are the one who bless those who go into raids by offering some sacrifice, traditional medicine, and so on. And uh, I would like us to see on that. Then we have also the issue, this of course I interviewed uh, a very senior military officer at Angata Balkon. He's working at the ASTU and stock theft unity. I think you know it in Kenya. And he said, the problem it is the law in Kenya itself. That this unit is established on the way that it is empowered to fight cattle theft, but not cattle rustling. And I think in my presentation yesterday, 
I was also trying to make the same. Try please to find what is the difference between cattle theft and cat rustling, and whether ASTU empowers these people to do with cat riding or cat rustling. And the last is the role of imperial investment, imperialist investment in Kenya. In, in, in North Mara, which is involved with the Kuria community, we have uh, the Kuria, and there are a lot of literature documenting that there is this cattle which are storing overnight. They are being transported through Kenya and then taken to meat canning industries. They are slaughtered in, during the night and the meat are processed. And after processing, they are being transported to Western countries, including the country of my brother here, China, and the others. Did you come across this? I think if you, you dwell on this much, you will see the generation set itself is not enough for the occurrence of uh, these wars and the regime changes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my kind of uh, question is to Mr. Wang. Uh, so after the revolution in China, so you have uh, clearly mentioned that you know the traditional system of uh, conflict resolution because of you know uh, government discourage uh, like traditional leaders. So even after that, you know because of that, you know China's go China government become a very strong so that they could uh, develop very well in terms of economic uh, uh, aspect. So but still, we can see. Uh, uh, as uh, as from your presentation on the like countryside, still traditional uh, uh, leaders are, are somehow given recognition by community, but not. I don't think that's given recognition by the government. So still, I can see uh, China, and also I don't mean to support in like in other like you know, people who are raising the voice to, for the like you know, but then how the Chinese government are trying to resolve. The like people who are raising their rights, like voice, f to ensure their rights. Uh, so and then, like, with the like changes. So I think. So uh, when, if you see on the like on situation of 1950s and then, you know, it's a 19 uh, and like 2000 and you know, I, I mean in the current situation, I can see so many changes. Chinese government is getting much more liberal. So what is the situation of uh, uh, addressing their voice? I just would like to uh, get your you know, op opinion or uh, what to say, uh, your understanding towards it. OK, thank you. My question is for Mr. Wong. Maybe it will be in the same way, but more deep. Uh, you talked about the. Uh, negotiation, mediation in the Chinese community. We know that in in Europe or United States, they resolve their problems in the community by negotiation, mediation. But you talked about the modernity and the uh, traditional system in in China. My question uh, in this mediation is: the Communist Party introduce itself or not? I mean, is the negotiation? Is it regulated by the by the party, or it happens only between people, families, or maybe community also, or ethnicity? Uh, we know that the in uh, maybe he spoke about the economy. I think the economy now it's the state capitalism. It's the always the party, yeah. It's not really the, the system capital, capitalist system, but it's the state capitalism because we know that Chinese who they work in Sudan, Africa, or in other countries, they don't have a good salary, but the, the benefit is for the state. My question is, in this mediation, is there control from the Communist Party or not? Yeah, thank you. My question goes to Salma and his uh, uh, colleague. I have heard about generations and the 
the generations that are used by this uh, tribe, the Sid Pakoti, mm -hmm. is, is uh, in my opinion confusing because they they have, uh, let's say, a father, and uh, a father and a, and a son or a daughter will not be in the same generation, but uh, the father and the grandfather will be in the same generation, which is not closer compared to uh, the distance between a father and a grandfather. In, in my opinion, they would do a, at least align a father and a son and then the other generation to come later. Uh, what is the logic behind that? That is one. And two, uh, also this, th there is that uh, uh, difference that when one is for peace, the other one is, is for war. And in, in, in the, again, my understanding, that probably would create uh, uh, another war between uh, people in the family. You are for peace and I am for war. So if uh, we are in a family and I am for, for peace and you are not going to support me in my peace initiatives and instead you support another uh, opposite side which is war, can't that create a, a, a second war in families? That is uh, my question. Thank you. Uh, just to follow this up, and it, it's the same, um, are these designations of a war generation and a peace generation really just um, for show, but the really a peace generation can make war and a war generation can make peace? Is that possible? Also, is, it, is there any possibility of making some kind of a balance two generations making decisions or discussing things at the same time instead of one going all the way one way and one going all the way the other way, which would seem to make some logic. Okay, thank you. So if not any more questions, we'll just give it to the presenters to respond. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, <clears throat> beginning with his question, my brother's question. Uh, generation set, set system that we are focusing on is a cultural designed system that has the blessings of all the entire community. Now, when we come to the cut wrestling issue and the theft, raiding, and whatever, this is an agreed pattern which was designed by the cultural leaders, including the seers and whatever, that if my son, like the way Samuel was putting, my son will be a war generation and I'll be a peace generation. The generation itself reigns for 100 years. That one singular generation, if it's war generation, it stays in power for 100 years. That tells you, even if you come with peace initiatives from outsider, the community is adamant. They will wage war until the time the generation, the other generation of peace takes over power. Now, this is the time when everyone will listen to you and say, it's peace, let's stop war. So, and that's why we are coming in, if a peace uh, actors or government is forcing the community to become peaceful, yet they know down deep inside the culture, it's time for war. The, the, the regime of, of war is in power. So you cannot do anything. And that is what has sustained all the conflict that has been seen within the communities. So like if my community strike the other community, the other community will, will strike my community. Now, 
The processes of change is through cultural ritual performance. And this is also linked to the deities. So if you are not permitted by the deities to conduct the peace ceremonies, then it will still continue. So it's a complex from the outsider perspective, but within the cultural system. And uh, my brother who was saying, if, if my son is a war group, a war regime, and I am the peace regime, always when the war regime is in war, they take charge of the community responsibilities and decision making. So the other one is silent. And if it's, if it's to go war, they join together in war. And when it comes to peaceful, there is nothing that you can do. You, will, you won't go to the war because the deity will not allow you to raid the other community when it is time for peace. And that's the logic behind the whole thing. And to respond to the professor's question, it's actually possible, but it is only possible with the goodwill of the regime in power. If they choose and say, we are tired of this war thing, let's hand over to the peace regime, then that, that can happen. So there's that possibility uh, that um, it can happen, you know. So, so uh, you're talking about balance, can there be balance? That can be the only the balance. Um, uh, and remember, the, the way I, we illustrated the process of power change. You know, it must follow certain procedure, set within certain time. Um, it must be confirmed at the end by the specialist, the seer, that it is uh, successful. And I think that's what he's referring to as consulting what? the date is when successful, then the power is handed over. But again, like we said, um, you know, humans have queer way of trying to go around things, even that culture or whatever. Like um, uh, the regime of war, which is in power, has stayed in power by some, you know, crooked means, because they didn't allow the transfer of power at the right time. They played with the process so that it doesn't become authentic to allow them to um, transfer power from that generation to another. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for your, uh, both of you. You raised very uh, interesting and uh, in-depth yes, questions, you, yeah. which make uh, me really think about it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, to be, uh, as I mentioned uh, in my presentation, China nowadays is less uh, politicalized in the, in the, uh, as it in the old days. So if you, if you don't mention, uh, I almost forget I am from a country with American government used to be hate most <laughs> 50 years ago. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, get back to the question. In the old days, like uh, 50 years ago, in Mao's era, uh, you know how Chinese mediator works? They encourage people to sacrifice their desire, their personal interest uh, for reaching a deal. Uh, they say it's for the good of our country, it's for the good of our party. But nowadays, nobody do that. Uh, uh, in, the, uh, in big cities, mediators, court-based mediators have to protect the rights of disputants. Uh, it, it's a more like a, a, a westernized style. Uh, they have to focus on problems. They have to help resolve their problems. But in the villagers, uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting. In Chinese villagers, they, right now, they got their own elections. Uh, they have their rights to elect their, the villager head. They can have their own community leaders. So those leaders have to be more justice than before to, 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 want to win the love of the villagers, <laughs> to, uh, to win the hearts of the community members. So when it comes to how they 
resolve conflict in villagers, they still have to be uh, creative, you know. You don't want to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> Uh, they have, although they, uh, I, I guess most, uh, no guess, I'm, I'm pretty positive, sorry, it's not guess. Uh, I, I actually, I, I personally investigated, uh, most uh, villager has, have not systematically trained with mediation skills, but actually they are doing a, go a good job, you know. Otherwise, uh, they wouldn't be the villager head for the next election. <laughs> Thank you, hope my answers address your questions. Uh, maybe um, to to um, Dr. Dennis and and uh, my friend Edie. Uh, when it comes, uh, our research focus only on uh, generation set system. We had also looked at all uh, these you said, and many scholars have done a lot of work about um, this. Group. Maybe not Lakatia, like you're saying. But these others, as to the, uh, the the prophets and um, you know the, the what they call commercialization of card wrestling, um, we have touched in passing some of those uh, you know uh, issues in our literature review, but not as detailed because our focus was to look at the you know look at detail in detail about uh, the generation. Uh, set systems of the Pokot. And uh, Dennis, um, uh, the, the other groups in Uganda like Karamojong, uh, the Toposas, the Turkana in Kenya uh, have generation set systems that are slightly different from the Pokot, but the Pokot is very close with the one uh, in Karamojong. Um, and uh, it's, it's complex to understand uh, because it's uh, you know very anthropological, and and, and you know it's, it's I think it's about the kinship system kind of models and so forth. You know, for those who in uh, uh, who are in anthropology, I'm not anthropologist myself, but uh, have taken time to understand how this generation says it. And then there are a number of uh, scholars who have done uh, work on this. You know. Um, Maybe you need to look at, uh, if you're interested, you can look at our paper. There's, uh, number, I think two, two key um, you know, researchers, particularly in that region. Um, and and, and, and um, so, so there's no confusion. Um, there's no confusion at all. Uh, the culture is very systematic, and members of that culture understand how um, it works. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, so I would like to thank uh, Coach Ome for uh, uh, enlightening us about the uh, Pokut uh, generational system, and also Zhao Wei for telling us how uh, uh, mediation has changed in China over the years. Uh, the next panel uh, will start very soon, and I would like to call up uh, Jacqueline, who's the moderator for the next panel. Thank you very much.